So I'm going to test uh, you guys on poll everywhere now. So at the top of your screen um, now, um, just as it reloads, you should see a uh, pollev.com slash ignite train 999. Um, and I just want you to say in a few words, what are your challenges when working from home? So yeah, you can do that as opening another tab on your web browser, you can do it on your phone. And as I can see a few people here. Um, so I like that person when it says in a few words, you've put focus, life around you, family deliveries, extending working hours from the previous office timings. Some things take longer when you know human interaction. So good use of a few words there. Um, but yeah, certainly we'll be tackling a, a couple of those points. Uh, moral inconsistencies, that's quite interesting. We'll look at that. And communication seems to be the biggest one. People saying loneliness, lack of feedback, um, concentration. Okay, so quite a few of these things we're going to uh, look at today. Just to give you a few key pointers about what you can do to manage your time a little bit more effectively. And then also um, how to be more productive. So we're getting quite a good few uh, things coming through here. Physical uh, activity related to posture back pain. Um, so yeah, not moving as much. So yeah, we will do, uh, certainly do that. I can see a good one there. It's logging off, sticking to working out. So quite a lot of these are things that are definitely manageable. We can do things um, with this. <laughs> yeah, homeschooling kids, definitely a, a key one there. So uh, now that we've had a bit of uh, interaction on poll everywhere, what I'm just going to do is now get into some of the key points so that we make use of our time more effectively. So how I'm going to start is by just telling you, well, what is time management? Well, in simple terms, time management um, is, yes, how you manage your time. But there is a few key points that fall into that. So it's a bit like a, a, a kind of an equation, really, a bit of a just a simple addition. So the first thing is being efficient. So being efficient is making sure that you can complete tasks with as little waste as possible. Um, so yes, that could be time, it could be energy, it could be the materials that you use. Any of those things attributes to managing time. So it's not just about being efficient though, it's also in addition to that, it's about being effective. So bringing about your desired outcome um, in the agreed time or what is usually expected of a task of that nature. So being efficient and effective is what we add together to equal productivity. So that is then that accumulation where we get the outcome that we want with the least amount of input. And where we can have less energy um, put into it or where we've used our energy in the most effective way, get into the result potentially earlier that is where we see um, added value. So with practice and with time, uh, which is a, a great thing, um, we will get better at this. Um, what happens in most cases when people say uh, they don't have enough time, it's usually because they're not managing it effectively and they let it run away from uh, themselves. So what I've got now is a few key points um, for us to see, well, Partly, how can we manage our time a little bit better? And then more importantly, how to get to that end goal of being productive. So just a few key tools that we're gonna go through. What I would like to do initially is just go back to Paul Everywhere and ask you guys, what do you currently do um, to keep productive? Okay, so uh, again, revisit uh, paulev.com slash ignite train 999. And in that box that should appear now, what are you currently doing to keep productive? Okay, use a timeline, a to-do list, <laughs> listen to Ignite web webinars. Um, good, hopefully it will be productive for you. Uh, planning your day, mini sprints, great, so I'm gonna mention about that today. Priority lists, excellent. Um, invest as much time to work. Now that's an interesting one, because, you know, um, how do we know uh, that we're investing as much as we can? So what kind of things are we doing to make sure that, that is? 
Um, excellent, someone's put uh, 25 minutes on and five minutes off. We're gonna talk about that today as well. Um, so great if you're using that technique, that's a good one. Um, meditate to keep the brain working, excellent. That's a really good one as well. We will be talking about how that is important to our kind of well-being as well as keeping productive. Um, chart out things the night before is a great way to do it as well. Um, plan daily reviews to ensure the first three are linked to my objectives. Excellent. That's another key thing that we're going to talk about today. So making sure that you've set the right goals and objectives to deliver the right outcome. Okay. So thanks very much for uh, saying a few of those things that you do to keep productive. Um, we are going to mention quite a few of these. So if you've seen some of the things on this list and go, oh, um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm familiar with those things. What tends to happen is we're familiar with the tools. We just don't put them into practice um, or we put them into practice for maybe a day or two or a week. And then we completely go back to normal. The key thing about being productive is keeping on top of those tools that you use, making sure that you kind of utilize it as best as you can, um, as much as you can, because the moment we stop using it, um, it becomes something that we just tried once. So it's really important for us to continue doing those. Um, so let me move on to my key points about being productive then. So the first one is yet yeah, have a goal, okay? You've got to make sure that you've got something that you're aiming for because otherwise we just have things that are just plans. They're not, they're not really goals. Um, and then we have too much that overwhelms us. So without having a key focus, on something particular that we want to achieve within a certain time frame, um, it just becomes too much. Um, as much as you hear um, people talking about having multitasking uh, capabilities, it's not something that we're built for. Um, the human body, the human brain is meant to focus on one thing at a time. And that's what's one of the key things that we're gonna do. So make sure you have yourself a goal. If you go, well, yeah, I've got goals. Um, I've, got, I've got loads of things that I want to do. The next part that I'm gonna to say to you is, is it written down? The reason for that is because if they're just in our head, we easily dismiss them. We don't really hold ourselves accountable. So it's really important to have something written down. I'm gonna take you through uh, something that you probably all know, um, but just as a quick guide, it's always important to make our goals um, smart. So uh, do any of us have a goal, personal or professional, that you're actively working towards? So again, it should have three. So excellent, someone's saying, what's a goal? I just put that in for a, a light-hearted joke, um, but we can certainly explain it in case you're um, really not sure. Uh, most people are saying yes. Um, we've not got anyone um, saying no at the moment. So it's good to know that we've got a personal, oh, Thanks, someone chipping in there. I hope that's honesty there and not for the uh, humor factor. Um, but yeah, personal or professional, um, we should have a goal. We should have something that we're aiming for. But most people don't have the goal written down in detail. And it's certainly not smart. It's one of the key ways in which we make sure goals are adhered to. So to look at SMART quickly, um, if you're not familiar, it's about being specific. So what is it exactly that you want to achieve? So it's all well and good thinking, you know what, we've potentially been in lockdown if you've been here in Dubai for maybe four weeks now. Um, I'd like to um, potentially lose a bit of this isolation weight that I've, I've put on. It's like, okay, all right, but be specific about it what would you like to lose? Um, where are you aiming towards? Is there a reason why you want to do that? Um, so think more specific about what exactly is it you want to achieve? How are you going to feel when you get to that? So I'm going to feel much better. It's going to be easy for me to potentially walk up the stairs than it was four weeks ago. You need to make sure it's specific so it means something more to you. Then we need to make sure it's measurable. So uh, you need to have where you are currently and where would you like to be? And that needs to be something tangible. So again, if we're talking about potential weight loss, you know, we need to look in um, weight. So kilograms, uh, pounds, what is it that you want to lose from where you are now? So as much as you might not want to, you need to jump on those scales, find out what you are, and then find out what you would like to lose. 
it needs to make sure that it's achievable. So is it something that you can actually uh, achieve? Don't want to say, I want to half my weight. That's not achievable. It's certainly not going to be healthy for you. Um, so you need to do something that you can gain or, or lose in that uh, aspect. So what can you actually get to? We need to make sure that it's still challenging so that we can achieve that goal because if it's too far out of reach, we'll uh, be easily demotivated. So always make sure it's something that you can achieve, but it's still challenging. Um, the R has a bit of contention because some people change the A and the R around. Sometimes you see R as uh, relevant. Uh, oh gosh, it's gone out of my head. Um, is it, oh, it's completely gone out of my head because I'm looking at relevant. Um, realistic was the other one just magically came into my head there. Um, so is it in line with your personal or professional needs? So not necessarily just your goal, because your goal should be this, but um, what is your need? So yeah, we all have a need to be healthy or healthier. So it is relevant to that part of my um, human need. Um, and then lastly, timely. Um, so make sure that you've got a specific time that's assigned to this. Again, if it doesn't have a time frame you're not going to stick to it. So what that ultimately means is you might write your goal to make it more meaningful. You might go, yes, um, I want to lose seven kilos um, of weight um, by doing certain exercises. So maybe circuit training in the house, uh, running up the stairs as much as I can. Um, it is possible, I can, I can achieve that, um, and then I want to lose that within the next six weeks. So not just saying six weeks, because when it gets to next week, my goal will still say six weeks, and I go, oh, I haven't done too well this week, so I'll just keep it six weeks from now. It's got to be a specific date, so therefore I would probably think the end of May, so even if we say um, 30th to the 31st of May, is when I will have that goal um, achieved by that then makes it a lot clearer and smart. Now you might think, yeah, Ben, I know about smart goals. Um, you've just, just wasted um, seven minutes of my life there talking about smart and familiar, but ask yourself, do you follow it? And most likely you probably don't. You probably have a good idea that you uh, set yourself goals, but you don't really write them down. You don't think whether it's hitting all five of these things. So my first thing to you would, have you really got a goal? So all those, can't remember how many people, let's just go back to, to that. Uh, what did we have? 94% of you said you have a goal. Is it smart? Um, is it written down? And that, that would kind of be my question to you. I don't need you to give me an answer, but um, that's what I want you to think about because it's really key. If you want to see uh, what it's like written down, um, you know, write it down on a chart like this. So something simple, it allows you to keep track of it. So what is your goal? So simply write what your goal is, um, making sure that it's smart. Then you can break that down in, into particular actions. So what are you going to do at different time frames to make sure that that is adhered to? So it might be that I now eat more healthily. So I stop buying takeaways. Um, it might be that I exercise three to four times a week, depending on what you've adhered to. Um, so all those things are specific actions that can go towards that goal. So your goal can be quite broad, your actions then define that because breaking things down into smaller chunks helps us be more productive because we see that there's something that we've achieved. You might have some resources that you need uh, to perform that. So you might need to buy yourself a little bit of equipment, maybe a yoga mat or something. Maybe you need to um, look at some different supermarkets to go to to get some healthier food. So all those can go in your resources. When do you want to complete that buy? So that date should always be prior to your ultimate goal date. You can keep track of when you actually completed it. Are you on track for that or are you behind? Because again, that holds you accountable if you're behind uh, on your particular action. And then is there an award, a reward that you could give yourself for doing that? So yes, we're in a bit of a tricky situation now where we can usually offer certain rewards that we would, um, but maybe it's that you reward yourself for a cheat night. Um, so after you've done this for three weeks, if you have lost don't know, maybe two, three kilos, then yeah, you'll just have one cheat night because we all need some uh, simple rewards. And as much as it's great to make sure that we uh, monitor our diet, you know, sometimes it's nice to just have those cheat days. So think about those elements as well on your goals.
So that's kind of my first point um, for that. So having a goal, key point to uh, managing your time to be more productive because you've got something to aim for. Second one uh, we saw when people saying this is how they keep uh, act, uh, sorry, they keep productive is make a to-do list. And again, it sounds stupid, um, but they really help. If you keep your to-do list off your computer, what that does is it hits a couple of points. You're writing it down. So again, it, you feel more accountable because you've written it um, and you're away from your computer because being on our computer for too long can also have a huge impact on us. So yeah, make a to-do list. It only needs to be simple, something like that. So what have you got to do? What are you currently doing? And what have you completed? So I've got a few things on here. Um, you know, create uh, my e-learning that I've got, attend a monday.com webinar. Um, so that's on my to-do list. They will happen uh, in the next couple of days this week. Uh, doing a deliver webinar. That's what I'm doing right now. So hopefully at the end of this, I will move that to my finished file. Um, prep for a call with Ben. So uh, if any of you are familiar with Ben Carter, when I call, I will be calling him later. So I've got that as a, as a prep as well. But on my completed, I've created my presentation, which I'm showing you now. Um, I've delivered a couple of other webinars this week. So they're on my completed list. Um, and I've sent a report. So simple things like that give me an idea of what I've accomplished this week. Um, so yeah, I've got four things done, I've got a couple of things that I'm doing now, and I've got two things on my agenda. So again, I can visually see what's happening. Um, so doing something like that, writing it down, um, post-it notes is such a simple way to just move things. Um, most of us have got some wall space where we can feel a little bit accountable and then have a little bit more control about what's going on. So yeah, make sure that you uh, write a to-do list of your actions to potentially help you with your goal or what you've got coming in that day. Um, second bit then is about prioritizing. Now, this is um, always an interesting one. Um, we always say that we've got priorities, um, but really priority by its definition just means those things that are above the rest or that thing, should I say, pri being one thing. Um, so we should only have one thing that's at the top of our list at any one time. We shouldn't have a number of things. And again, that just goes down to the same point I was making about having a goal. It needs to be focused on one thing. So maybe um, your priorities um, are you know, completely different to someone else's. I would expect that they are. We all have things that are important to us, but maybe not important to others. And what's important to others is not important to us. So um, again, something that you're probably familiar with, but you probably don't use, um, is um, the Eisenhower matrix. Um, so again, um, putting things on a two by two matrix, which us trainers love so much, um, the things that are important and not important from top to bottom and the things that are not urgent to urgent um, across the side there. So this breaks it down into four types. So things that you should do first. So anything that is important and urgent is something that you should do. That should be your priority. Okay. If you've got a few things that are important and urgent, then you need to prioritize them as well. So what is the most important and the most urgent? That's what you need to do first. What's the next one? That's what you need to do next. After that, we should look to schedule things. So what's important, because it should be important to you, um, but not urgent. So that means that you can put it off for a bit of time. So uh, for example, attend my monday.com webinar. Um, it is important to me. I want to see uh, what kind of things are being offered on monday.com right now. Um, but it's not urgent for me to do it because it's not due till tomorrow. If you're not familiar with monday.com, it's just something that we use here at Ignite. Um, it's a good visual planning tool. Um, so it allows you to keep track of tasks when they're completed. And if you've got a number of people in your team, it allows you to all collaborate together. So if you're interested, go on it. Um, it's a good tool. After that, things could be urgent, but not important. So urgent means that they are quite timely. Uh, they are required for us to complete them, but it's not important to you. It might be something that's pushed to you by someone else. So it's important to them to have it done right now, but it's not important to you. So anything that's in that urgent important, we might need to manage that. And when we say manage, that might be that we need to potentially schedule um, because we might need to say, you know, I can't do this right now, but I can do it 
at this time. Or alternatively, we need to learn to say no. And that's a word that most of us... <laughs> Uh, mute if you if you can just create that background noise I thought you was going to ask a question then um, um and then yeah we need to make sure that we say no because as much as we don't like hearing it um it gives people that ability to say look i know what i have uh, currently on my to-do list um i'm unable to uh, quite put more time to that so again um saying no is not a bad thing uh, we feel bad doing it, but if you back it up with uh, relevant information, say, look, this is the things that I have on right now, I'm unable to do this. If you're pushing back to your manager, then say those things and say, which of these things would you push back and be acceptable to be delayed in order for me to do this, one, this other task for you? And what that does is it gives kind of the authority to them to say, I'm now saying that this doesn't need to be done in the time frame that I originally give you. Most people will be quite lax on things unless it is extremely, extremely urgent. And what you will find is most things that people say are urgent are actually not. So again, learn to say no. Lastly, things that are not urgent and not important, you should avoid. Um, these are things that don't really add any value to you. So think about how much time you might spend on social media throughout the day. Is that really urgent or important? Most likely not. So it's not going to help you achieve your goals. It's not going to help you get through your day. So those things should be avoided as much as possible. Sometimes you see a different one on this. So if you are a leader within the manage, you might also see delegate. So if you have people working for you and you've got a task that is urgent but not important, can you offer it to someone else to complete? on your behalf. So again, it's not going to be important to them either. So do bear that in mind, um, but it just makes sure that you can still manage your workload. If you're familiar with how your team operates, you might be able to assign it to someone who still has the time to complete that task. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of uh, points uh, to see if you guys can uh, put these tasks in the right place. So, if you join Poll Everywhere again, um, you will see that there is now an Eisenhower matrix on uh, the board, uh, sorry, on your uh, phone or tablet, whatever you're using. I'm just going to show a task and I want you to place where you think it is. So is it something that you should do first because it's important and urgent? Something that you should schedule because it's important but not urgent? Manage because it's urgent or not important? Or avoid because it's not urgent and not important? So the first one is a productivity report of your team, which has been requested by your manager. So if it's a report of your team requested by your manager, is that something that is important, urgent, important, not urgent? Is it urgent, and not important? So just click on that picture on your app and we'll be able to see what that is. So I'll just have a look at some of the results now. Okay, so we've got quite a few people saying do first. We've got 10, 11 people on schedule, two people on manage. It's nice that no one said avoid yet. <laughs> um, so, okay, we've got a few responses there. It looks like schedule is uh, leading the way. If you said schedule, yeah, that's quite right. Um, remember that um, what we're looking at here is the fact that it's been... Um, given by our manager, it's important, but we don't really have a deadline. So at the moment, we're looking at scheduling because there's no urgency um, revolved around that. Because it's your team, it should be important to you because it's their productivity. So you might feel that it's not important to you, but as your responsibility, it should have follow some importance. And um, so the next one now, what you might need to do is just click the clear button at the bottom of your. Um, screen and it'll just allow you to vote again okay so complete your end of quarter review which is currently one day overdue so click the clear button at the bottom of the screen on poll everywhere um, and you will be able to submit a new answer you might want to stay where you were so you might want to uh, schedule that one again but see how you go on that okay let's have a look so seeing those results, 
a lot of people putting it in do first, few people saying schedule, uh, one person saying manage. Um, really what we should be seeing is this now falls into the do first bracket. Um, it's important because it's your end of year results and it's also urgent because it's already one day overdue. So had it been a date in the future, you might consider that to be scheduled because it's not urgent right now. Now that you're overdue with it, it's now become urgent. So time is a factor and it's still important. So do first would have been the correct one there. Um, what about complete the next task on your work related qualification? Okay. So again, click the clear button on Poll Everywhere. And then where would you put to complete the next task on your work-related qualification? Ben, sorry, somebody's asked a question related to the first one. Did you wanna answer it now or wait to the end? Uh, yeah, if it's, if it's relevant to that, what's the question? Um, they said, but if your manager has asked you for it, then it means it is urgent from Samir. Nope, that's incorrect. Um, it's uh, because your manager has asked for it. Um, it's just something that they've requested. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is urgent because we didn't assign any time frame. So your manager could have asked you for it, but um, it doesn't say when it's due. So remember, urgent only means when the time frame is extremely close. You know, they could have asked you and just said, "Look, can you produce this report for me?" If you just say yes. There's, there's no time bound on that. So to manage their expectations a bit better, I would say, when would you like that for? And if they say yesterday, which is probably the common thing, then it becomes a little bit more urgent, but then again, challenge them. Just go, I don't have the functionality to do that today. I don't have the time. These are my tasks. When's an acceptable time that you can have this in? And then if they go, well, give it to me by the end of the week. Well, you've got a day and a half now. Can you schedule that in? Right, schedule it. So it's not urgent at that time just because your manager says so. Usually when we get things from managers, we assume it's urgent, we don't ask, and we also think it's important, but does it really fit in with what we want to do? So it might not be important to us, it's important to them. But because it's about your team, it should be important to you. Thanks for that, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Benjamin, for following up on that. No worries, no worries at all. Thanks for the question. Um, okay, so uh, we've got quite a few people say do first on this, so they're saying it's important and urgent. Um, a few people, oh no, sorry, numbers have dwindled. I'm just seeing all the pinpoints. So it looks like 19 people say schedule, four people say do first. It's dropping a little bit. So yeah, we, we should look to schedule that because it's important to us because it's part of our goal. It's our work-related uh, qualification so it should be important but again it's not urgent so we may be able to do that at our own pace it's just the next task we should be scheduling that in all right great last one just to move forward uh, read an article on next year's film releases so where would we put that so once again just press clear on your uh, poll everywhere and then next year's film releases article let's have a look Okay, quite a lot of people going into a void schedule. Uh, I can see that there's still a few people in do first, maybe they've not cleared them yet. Um, or maybe they consider it extremely important and urgent to find out what's going on next year. Um, ideally, we should be avoiding that. Yes, we should be using that in our own time um, when kind of we're not completing urgent and important tasks. So in our personal time, we can do that because that changes. So, all right, great. So looks like we've got a good idea about um, using a priority uh, element. So now that we've covered that, there are some key points that we should be looking at with regards to managing our time a little bit more effectively by having a goal, setting a to-do list, and then prioritizing things that we have within those lists and making sure that we've got one thing that we want to aim for. And the next few things that I'm going to look through is now things that help us be a little bit more productive uh, and tie into a lot of the things that you guys were saying on your first question about what is kind of stopping you from being productive. So the first one is create a space. Um, now, what I mean by this is because we're all working uh, remotely now, um, so this ties into the, the virtual element, is you need to try and make a space that is your own. Um, that is separate from your personal space. And this isn't easy for all of us. You know, um, some of us are in uh, one bedroom apartments. Maybe we're sharing spaces with other people. 
um, we, we don't all have a potential to just make a brand new space out of, out of nothing. Um, so what can you potentially do? Well, it doesn't really matter how big or how small that space is. It's about making sure that that space is solely used for your work purposes. So if it's a seat at the table, make sure that you don't sit back at that table later on in the day. Move to a different chair, sit in a different place, because the moment you sit back in that same chair, you associate that with being at work and it switches your brain onto thinking about work. So even if it's something as simple as moving to a different chair um, in the same room um, during your personal time, that helps. If you're really struggling and the only place you have available is your bedroom that you can do, well then try and set things up um, a little bit differently. So maybe do something as silly as removing all the pillows and uh, the duvet from your bed um, putting them aside so it's just a flat space so it feels different it doesn't quite feel like a bed anymore because bed is supposed to be a sacred space that you predominantly sleep you might get up to other things but again that might help with your productivity or not um, but yeah try and keep spaces as separate as you can OK, you need to ensure that whatever you do for work is slightly different from your personal space. If you have to sit on the couch, again, try and sit in a different uh, part of it. Um, whatever you do, if you're in a bed, don't just try and stay in bed and work on your laptop. Uh, I promise you that you won't focus. Um, you'll constantly be feeling a little bit tired because your mind already associates bed with a place of sleep. So you'll get tired a lot easily. Um, so ensure that you do that. Um, if you can close off that space, great. That helps as well because it blocks out some distractions. You know, uh, maybe someone has to knock to enter or something like that. Uh, they're all going to help. But whatever you do, um, make sure that you don't return to the same space or the same type of space when it's your personal time. Another key point is about setting boundaries and, and these might fall into a number of factors. So it might be your partner, uh, it might be the internet, social media, um, it may, might be the kids or it might even be your colleagues or your manager. It's important to establish boundaries about time frames that you're available. Again, most of these things are probably easily said than done and, and that could be said for everything that I've talked about so far. Everything is easier said than done. It's about making sure that you put that in practice and stick to it. So uh, for the internet, for example, um, have a look at some of the add-ons that you can get um, for your internet. So it stops you looking at uh, certain gossip sites or news articles whilst you're using um, workspace time. So I think Freedom is one of them. Um, oh, I did write another one down and I forgot. I'll try and come back to that in a minute. Um, but there's, uh, have a look for them because there's quite a few that exist and they're just add-ons that go into your web browser. Um, and you can even shut your web browser off for a period of time. So it can say between the hours of 10 and one, um, I'm unable to access the internet. Um, and it just kind of blocks you from doing that. There's always works around, uh, it's like putting in a password to, to lift that, um, but at least it's some measure to kind of set a boundary for yourself. Um, switch your phone off if possible. If you need to be in constant contact, then all right, try and, um, do something different by maybe alerting people to say you are not available during these hours because you're concentrating on work. Um, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute about interruptions and we'll see how much that affects us. Um, but it's really important for you to be able to stay on task. And every time your phone beeps, every time it goes off, whether it's social media notifications, whether it's a text, a WhatsApp, a phone call, they're all huge interruptions. So, you know, make those boundaries with people. We're in an unprecedented time now. Nobody knows about the perfect way to work. Uh, we can only talk about things that might help us. So use this time now to set new boundaries. We can't work the same way we used to work in an office. It's not as easy to just do an eight till six job and just be out of the house working, come back. Um, we need to set new boundaries. So get into the habit of setting these, you know, tell people that you're only going to check your emails um, four times a day. Um, even put it on your signature. This mailbox is only monitored at these particular times. That way people realize that they're not going to get an immediate response. 
We live in a 24 seven environment because we make it a 24 seven environment. The moment people stop replying, stop um, kind of picking things up immediately, that's when we get to a better place where we can just work within normal working hours. If your working hours need to be segregated and you need to work a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, a little bit in the evening, then that's great. But where possible, segment that time officially. Again, write it down, put it on a board. This is the time that I'm going to be working. Then I'm going to spend some time with my kids and my family. Then I'm going to spend some time working again. Then I'm going to spend time with my family. Make sure it works around things that work for you. Um, and only you can decide what that looks like. Not everyone can just sit down and be in front of a laptop um, for six, seven, eight hours. Um, and I thoroughly wouldn't recommend that. And again, I'll go through some tips shortly. So make sure you set boundaries with those people. Even your kids, you know, you they, they should have work to do. Um, so I know some of you have said homeschooling. Um, the responsibility of the, of the teachers is not completely absent. My wife is a teacher also, and she's probably finding it more difficult now uh, managing uh, the kids um, just by setting work and trying to get that back in. So, of course, as parents, you have a responsibility to make sure that they're getting work done, um, but teachers should still be uh, supported supporting that as well by giving them those tasks to complete they need to spend time doing those tasks that's when you can potentially step away and do the tasks that you need to do as well again set those boundaries during this time we're going to do these tasks you're going to do your schoolwork i'm going to sit here and do my uh, work work so um, make sure it's kind of segmented out it extremely helps so that's kind of one of the key things about boundaries um, the last thing that I'm going to give you a few key tips about is breaks regularly. And this is, again, going back to some of the key things that were said um, on the ways in which you are productive, which was great from some of those uh, people. So the most important thing about um, working successfully and being productive is taking breaks. It's the one thing that we always forget about or we always dismiss and go, I can't take my break now. I've got to get this done it's much better if you take that break and then return back to the work. A key thing about this though, is to keep in regular uh, kind of patterns about how that happens. So the first one I'm gonna talk about, about being productive, oops, sorry, I've just gone off the wrong one there, um, is about, oh, oh, I'll come back to that in a minute, um, is the Pomodoro um, technique. So uh, some of you may be familiar with this, um, and it was inspired by a Pomodoro tomato timer, just like sh that is shown on your screen. Um, and even though most of those go up to one hour, um, I've forgotten the name of the gentleman that came up with this, so forgive me. Um, but he relied on 25 minute uh, sprints. Okay, so you would dedicate your time to completing a task. So it might be, you know, creating uh, my presentation. So I might have set 25 minutes, a, a full timer. So it might be on your phone. It might be if you've got a cooking timer like that, it might simply be on your screen. Um, set a 25 minute timer. As soon as that timer is up, you put a check mark on your work and you go and take a five minute break. You must leave the work that you're doing. Okay, so it's not about just sitting back and going, all right, I'll just wait five minutes now. Uh, you've got to move away from the work that you're doing. Um, it helps with something that we call incubation. So it gets the unconscious mind thinking about the task while you're doing something else. But make sure that you utilize that five minutes effectively. So, yeah, go for a walk around, around the house as much as you can, the apartment, uh, walk up and down a couple of flights of stairs, just kind of get the blood flowing, make sure that you're utilizing uh, the time to do something good. Um, or even get yourself some water because um, that's extremely good to keep us hydrated. Once you've done those 25 minute slots um, in four points, so you have four check marks on your work. Then you take a longer break of maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So again, it's working in four sprints, um, 25 minutes with a five minute break, 25 minutes with a five minute break, 25 minutes with a five minute break, 25 minutes with a five minute break. Um, but on that last one, extend that break. So instead of five minutes, we take them 15 or 20 minutes. So after four, take a longer break. And, and that's a Pomodoro technique. Um, and it's extremely useful uh, for most people. If you complete your task before um, the 25 minutes is up, um, then start jumping into something else if you can. 
Um, some people like to write that off and just go, great, I'm going to get some time back for me and use it to do something else. But generally, we can try and switch task and utilize the time and call that overlearning. So the Pomodoro technique is a great one. The next one I want to talk to you about is your circadian rhythm. So the circadian rhythm is the 24-hour process that your body goes through to function. Okay, so uh, this is quite a basic one that I saw. But I thought it helps us quite a bit. So I know it says there uh, 12 o'clock midnight. It was just an easy way to show 24 hours. So we're talking about restorative sleep. So that's when the body recovers. So when we're in uh, light sleep and medium sleep, the body is generally repairing itself. It's um, kind of processing things that have gone on through the day. Deep sleep is where we tend to not be in any sort of function whatsoever. It is deep sleep, so we're not necessarily dreaming or the brain is processing much. That's when we can have the lowest activity. When we go into REM sleep, that is generally where the body fully recovers, gets uh, prepped to get up, um, and then starts to awaken. Now, when I go into a little bit more detail in a minute, I'll tell you about um, how that time breaks up because it's not from 12 till six when that happens. Uh, they're in much shorter bursts. And then we start to get some sunlight, hopefully coming through the windows, uh, things like that, trying to open those curtains. And that's when the body starts to become more alert. Okay, so sunshine is important. So try and get out if you can, just to at least get onto a balcony or just out into a garden, just outside the, the front door if you've got um, light coming in from there just to get some sunlight because it does kind of keep the body working a little bit more then we start to go up to our highest alertness of the morning um, then we've got elements of good coordination we've got fastest reaction times as we get towards the kind of early afternoon we should limit caffeine from that point before six o'clock because caffeine keeps us more active um, so we should try and reduce that then we start to think about closing down so as sunset happens, we should start dimming lights. So don't have bright lights in the house in the evening. Try and keep them warm or soft if you've got that set in or buy different light bulbs because that helps. And then limit technology use. So don't be using your phone late at night. Don't be watching films, TV, Netflix, whatever it is, and because the body really needs to start shutting down. And then that's when we get into a sleep pattern. Now, that's the circadian rhythm. That's over 24 hours. Within 24 hours, we have something called the ultradian rhythm. Now, the ultradian rhythm is 90-minute blocks, and this is how we sleep. We sleep in 90-minute blocks. So when you have a good night's sleep, it's usually that you've woken up just in that light um, element of sleep after a REM sleep. So you've had a 90 minute block and then you've had, uh, and then you've kind of woken up in that. That's usually when we feel good. If our sleep has been disturbed during deep sleep or REM sleep, um, that's when we can sometimes feel groggy. So an interesting thing for you to do is try and track your sleep. Uh, you can get some tracking apps on your phone um, and try and work in 90 minute bursts. So not necessarily sleeping for 90 minutes and waking up, but make sure that the 90 minutes um three hours uh, four and a half hours six hours etc so the recommended amount is usually seven uh, to eight hours so try and work in around that if you can some people like power naps and again sometimes we can say they're 20 minutes but ultimately if you can get a one hour and a half nap then that makes us feel more uh, re revitalized so it looks and a little sorry, sorry you do have a you do have a question somebody is well, i'm a night owl I prefer sleeping late uh, and waking late. So does my circadian rhythm adjust accordingly or am I missing out on my best? Um, you, you're missing out on your best abilities um, by, by moving that. Um, of course, some people do have uh, jobs which require them to work at night or they feel more productive at night. So it's, it's a generalization that people have this circadian rhythm but the reason why is all because of the uh, rising and the setting of the sun um, our body does kind of use uh, vitamin d the sunlight um, to be more active so if you kind of feel that you're more of a night owl yes you're not getting that sunlight as much as you should so you're not feeling as energized as you should but then that's not to say that it certainly doesn't work for you but what I would say, you know, with some of the scientific elements, it may mean that you're not getting the best performance that you can get. 
And sorry, Ben, you had one more question just with regards to your brake techniques. Um, what could you do if your company does not allow such techniques, the, such a couple of the techniques you were explaining about with regards to the 25 minutes on, five minutes off? I'll, I'll come back to that um, later as a, as a question at the end, if that's all right, Ben. Uh, can I just add value to what Benjamin said, actually? I know you're going to answer it later, but that 25 minute thing won't actually be applicable in the retail element or retail environment. So whenever you're going to answer that, just keep the retail uh, business into consideration. I mean, sure. All right, no worries. Thank Great. You. So um, I'll certainly answer that shortly. So the ultradium rhythm does look a little bit like this then. So over those 90 minutes, our activity level starts to increase. We hit peak performance during around the kind of 45 to an hour mark. And then we start to dip automatically again. And those 20 minutes is what's required for ultradium healing. So that's when our body needs to recuperate. And the What's interesting about this is it's exactly like what our sleep pattern is. So we sleep for 90 minutes um, and then we generally have 20 minutes where it's potentially a light sleep or we could wake up. Then we go through that process um, again within sleep. So we go through light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, and it's all within 90 minute cycles. So when we're awake during the day, that is then kind of flipped where we need to be more awake and responsive for 90 minutes and then take a break for 20 minutes so if you want to kind of utilize this um, use something a bit like this where we use a, a BRAC uh, example so BRAC stands for break rest activity cycle so uh, when should we take breaks um, for our rest in our activity? So I've kind of broken this down into some key elements of the day. Um, so task and interruption, just to keep track of what might be getting in our way of uh, sticking to our 90 minute slots. So half five till half eight, you know, you might be asleep, your alarm clock might be what has woken you up um, and then you're ready kind of for your day. Obviously, this can slide depending on when your working day is. Um, but then 8.30 till 10.15 is our 90-minute slot plus our 15-minute break. So we might compile a report for our client. That takes 90 minutes. As soon as that 90 minutes is up, I'm then going to take a 15-minute break. So I know it's not close to 20, but I just tried to do it so it was easy to see on a chart. And then you can just go through this and keep track of your day about what task you're doing at that time, just like in the Pomodoro technique. And again, because we're focusing on one task at a time, that's what then helps us to move forwards. So again, just a handy little tool to use the break rest activity cycle that's uh, adhering to our ultradian rhythm. So I'm just going to finish with four key tips to look after yourself um, and then I'll get to answering questions. Um, so first, exercise when you're on your breaks. I've already mentioned about this. So yes, get away from your computer screen. We're not built to constantly be looking at a screen. Um, try to walk around and focus on anything that isn't uh, that. I haven't put, I haven't spelt your right there, so I've missed that out. Uh, but stretch your legs, your arms, your back, anything. So I know someone mentioned um, that it's difficult, uh, your muscles seizing up. That's because you probably sat there for too long, not getting up and moving. So where we might usually, if we're in the workplace, we might get up and go to walk to a meeting. Um, we might go to the water cooler, except that. Still try and utilize those things. Even if you've got a meeting coming up in the last five minutes, just you know, walk down your stairs, walk into another room as if you were walking to a meeting. As much as you can, try and replicate those things to bring about some exercise on, uh, in your day. Try and meditate or breathe. Um, now, I know you might say, well, Ben, I'm breathing now. What, what's the point in that? Um, I had a conversation uh, yesterday with uh, a client that we were talking to about the importance of taking five deep breaths a day. Um, and it helps remove the toxins in your body. Uh, it can lower the cholesterol if you're doing it on a regular basis. Um, and it sends more oxygen to the brain. So it gets us a little bit more energized and revitalized. So even taking those five deep breaths. And if you want to do um, your breaths properly, what I would say is, um, I know you're probably not going to be able to see me as much, but um, put one hand on your chest. Can you sternum where the, uh, the bone is going down there? One hand on your stomach. And when you take a deep breath, your uh, 
hand on your sternum, on your chest, should come out further than your belly. If you are feeling that your belly is coming out a bit more, it means that you're taking shallow breaths. Okay, so most of us throughout the day just take shallow breaths. But when we take a deep breath, our chest should pump up, our lungs should fill, and then breathing out, that's when it should kind of come more in line with our, our belly and our sternum. Five deep breaths a day can massively help us. Um, but always think about that as well because it helps alleviate stress and anxiety by regulating our breathing. If you can meditate, excellent. Um, do that within maybe 20-minute slots. There's lots of meditation techniques that you can use, whether it's something a bit like mindfulness, whether it's just complete relaxation where you're not focusing on any, anything um, or meditating in the uh, best fashion you can. So do utilize those tips to make sure you feel good. And keep socially active. Um, probably get in trouble for this, but abandon social distancing. I hate it as a phrase. It's horrible. Um, use physical distancing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be keeping two meters uh, apart. You know, that's not socially distancing yourself from people. You can still have a conversation from two meters away. You can still speak to people. You can still get online and communicate with people like we're doing now. This is all social. We're not distancing ourselves. We're physically distancing ourselves. So make sure that you do keep socially active in those times where you might have gone to the water cooler maybe then see if someone's available remember that they might be trying to stick to their own pomodoro or ultradian um, uh, time frames so maybe check if they're available before just calling so you don't interrupt them um, or just set times when you're going to speak to people um, better and even if it's speaking with your family friends um, people that maybe aren't here in the country it's really kind of make those times work for you um, and them as well but just make sure that you pick the right times to doing it don't do it during the task um, and then lastly smile um, it's always a bit of a cheesy one but you'll uh, be amazed how much it works even if we're in a potentially bad mood if we force ourselves to smile it kind of lifts those emotions a little bit and gets us out of that and you'll see there i've said stick a pencil between your teeth when you're completing a task and um, so i've got i've got a pen here if you put that pen between your teeth and hold it Irish, your muscles automatically create the similar uh, place that you do when you're smiling when you're smiling while completing a task, it makes you see that task more positively. So a group of French uh, students did this at a university where they uh, tasked people with completing tasks with a pen in their teeth, creating a smile, and in their lips, where it creates a frown or a sad element. And those people that had the uh, pencil in their lips didn't complete tasks as well as those that were smiling and when they did certain things like reading comics or jokes those people that had the pen in their teeth uh, found the jokes to be more funny and um, so again you'll be surprised by how useful it is just to simply smile when you're doing that and it just lifts your mood changes your outlook so do think about that um, so uh, the last kind of thing I'm going to do uh, as we're approaching a kind of a few minutes back is just invite you to uh, give some feedback. Um, so if you go to pauleverywhere.com slash ignite train 999 again, you will just see that there is a few questions there. I think there's maybe five or six questions. Um, so they're just radio buttons. Just give them a quick uh, tick for me. And then I'm just going to open this opportunity to ask any questions. What I will do is just answer the one before. So what if your business doesn't allow you to adhere to the Pomodoro technique, um, especially retail? Well, um, we are in a bit of a tricky situation at the moment. So let's just kind of step away from retail for one moment. Um, anyone can manage their time as they see fit at this moment. So I'm not saying that the Pomodoro is the best technique to use. It's all dependent on how you feel uh, and what works for you. So we talked about the uh, BRAC cycle, which is uh, an hour and a half and then uh, potentially 15, 20 minutes. Um, even people in the kind of uh, retail area can stretch those ever so slightly. So people are entitled to a break, people are entitled to a lunch. Um, and even when we're doing tasks in a retail focus, it doesn't mean that we're constantly on the go. 
Uh, we can have a moment where let's use a potential retail experience where you've got someone um, dealing with someone in a shop front. You know, you're not going to be constantly having to deal with customers for a 90 minute period. It's not going to be back to back to back to back to back. So uh, when are those moments that you can do something worthwhile um, where you're speaking to customers, but then you can just go into the back room and just take five minutes where you can just kind of, uh, rest, recuperate, and then potentially deal with some stock issues. So spend 90 minutes dealing with stock while you're in the, the back of the uh, office or the, the shop. Then return back to uh, presenting things onto the shop floor where it might not be a task that you can just complete for 90 minutes, putting uh, things out on shelves or uh, racks. You might get interrupted by a customer. Um, so we can't always stick to specific tasks based on our our work rate, but we can certainly still take potentially five minutes where we can just go away. You know, if you do have break times for 15, 20 minutes, you know, um, speak with your manager and just go, look, I'd like to try and take those as five minute slots if I can, um, instead of one uh, big 20 minute. And then your larger break can be your lunch. So there's different ways in which you can do it. This is not an exact science, it's just a potential recommendation where you can potentially do something a little bit different. Does that help with the question asked about retail? Yeah, yes, it does, Ben. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thanks, Thank you, Ben. ben. Thank you, ben. Um, any other questions on the chat? Nothing else. Um, ben, if you can, can you just put up the webinar schedule for the next two weeks? I sent it to you on Zoom. On Zoom? Yeah, I sent you on Zoom. Okay. Just um, download. Let me just exit uh, this a moment then. Okay, that's slowly downloading. Very slowly. Um, ladies and gents, look, thank you very much for coming on. I'm sure you've all in individually each been, uh, had a few invites from myself and from Kevin over the last few weeks. Um, look, please continue to share with your colleagues. Please continue to share and with anybody you feel it may be relevant but look we've put the next series as such of webinars together um we've got two which will be focused on negotiation so like a negotiation 101 and then a more advanced negotiating in a tough environment right. um on monday the 20th and wednesday the 22nd once ben keeps it up <laughs> <laughs> um, Russell would then be taking on a lead in in challenging times on the 29th we're going to do something a little bit different which we're really excited about which is a well-being in action what is your business doing for you so we're going to have a couple of expert guest panels speaking around how they are currently supporting their employees so if that is you if you guys out there are doing something wonderful to support your employees at this time and you'd like to share your story with the community please get in touch up get in touch with myself, get in touch with Kevin, um, or get in touch with the other Ben. And I know it's during Ramadan, but we'll be bringing together everyone together socially um, for our isolation quiz. I did call it Let's Get Quizzical, but I can see that's been changed. Um, <laughs> once again, all of the signups are on the Google Forms, all of my mobile number, WhatsApp, um, and our email is there. We would please invite you guys to be involved in every single one, especially the quiz. Um, look, it's just a little bit of fun to bring everybody to, bring everybody to together, especially during uh, the holy period as well. So on top of that, we've got the free webinars. We are also running, look, a number of, we have, look, we have paid opportunities as well for organizations. What we do here is really just a taster so people can really see how we can deliver value. We've got topics on stress management, on mental well-being, virtual leading. Ben has a full schedule uh, and a full course on virtual productivity and time management, which we spread across uh, four different sessions. Um, and then also we have what am I missing here? Uh, virtual coaching and feedback. So if you're interested in any of them, please look, get in touch with us. Um, we're more than happy to try and support. Great, thank you very much, Ben. So, um, just any other questions from anyone? Um, that one? Can we consider one on mindfulness from uh, me too? I'm not too sure she's still here. Um, yeah, I can certainly look into that. I mean, mindfulness isn't my expertise. Um, I do um, 
utilize elements of it to myself and it is part of a, another course that we run uh, with regards to mental health and how the mindfulness can support so you know if if that's something that you require we can certainly look into it and um yeah i have a question ben if you're available yes of course uh, i just wanted to know is i when or when that your presentation will be available just really because there's a few of those especially the can't remember the name but the schedule do now avoid one right. I, I, I need that pinned up somewhere <laughs> okay um, yeah I'll certainly uh, send out a PDF uh, for that so um, I believe Ben have you got most of people's email addresses from yeah we do Kev yeah we do um, so yeah I'll, I'll distribute a, yeah, a PDF document with a few of those key tools on real thank you thank you Katie Anything else from anyone? All right, excellent. Um, I think it's one of the earliest finishing uh, webinars that we've had. They're all supposed to finish at 11, but they always run over. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. Uh, do get in touch with Kevin or Ben if you're interested in any of the other courses that we're running. Um, and yeah, as always, stay safe and be physically uh, distant, uh, but don't be socially distant. Get in touch with people, um, even after this call. Give someone a call, interrupt them. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, have a good day.